Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and breaking down to bite-sized pieces. Today is another great day as far as a fantastic week. First up, Cardano successfully initiates Shelley Hard Fork and things should get easier moving forward, states Charles Hoskinson. Also, even though eToro is not my favorite platform, that is for sure, I've been getting a ton of requests for following uh, because of the uh, pretty good gains that I've had over the last uh, two weeks or so. And just as a public service announcement, uh, do not follow me in eToro. I do not do trading, I only do investing. And uh, even though I am up massively, uh, I have nothing to teach anyone about trading because all I do is invest and dollar cost average. And finally, Bitcoin is a form of money in DC federal court rules. And why at first glance this looks uh, fantastic, but in reality, it means absolutely nothing. So here we are. It is uh, Sunday, July 26. It is around 12 o'clock Texas time. And uh, hey, can't <laughs> ask for anything better. What a great day. And this is uh, right now. I haven't refreshed this. So let's see. So it's at Bitcoin's at 9800, Ethereum's at 305, Tether's Tether, XRP 21, Bitcoin Cash, sure. Uh, let's just do a quick refresh, see what we got. And pretty much about the same thing. So Bitcoin just below 10,000, even though it had passed over that 10,000 mark. Ethereum's looking pretty strong at uh, 305, up 3.4% for the day. Tether's Tether, XRP. You know, as much as I make fun of XRP and I always say, watch out. Um, XRP, I, if you don't know, I've invested into it. And um, to me, it's like that really talented kid, kid on your football team that it just has a lot of potential, but just kind of underperforms. And you kind of make fun of him because you're like, come on, you can do better than this. What the heck's going on? And uh, that's how I see XRP. And I'm like, Ugh, what are you going to do? But uh, funny, funnily enough, uh, as far as the market cap goes, Tether and XRP are pretty close. And I was actually watching it this morning and it was flipped XRP for a brief amount of time overtaken tether and actually cardano for a very brief amount of time had overtaken bitcoin cash so uh, we will see how this plays out i do not see bitcoin cash staying at the number fifth uh, five position uh, especially with what's going on with cardano and we're going to go uh, over that in depth there's a lot of really great information uh, really exciting times what's happening with cardano so i don't see cardano cardano will be in the, in the top five this week guaranteed uh, bitcoin sv Still don't understand why it's in the top 10. Uh, Litecoin, there was a big push um, this week. Looked like it was up 13%. So if anybody knows exactly why that is, um, I don't know if they're doing more with privacy and they're trying to do these types of things, but uh, sure, uh, just let me know why that is. Chainlink down 4%, 7.5%. So if you're like me, this was a great opportunity uh, to pick up some cheap Chainlink as uh, we had talked about yesterday. I believe this is going to be one of the linchpins for decentralized finance. So go ahead. Uh, if you're into that, uh, tr this is what I did. I picked it up. You can do whatever you want to do. Obviously, not financial advice and so on and so forth. So not too bad. And before we move on, I'm going to say that I think what's happening with Bitcoin, because once it hits that 10,000 mark, uh, I think a lot of people just like me may have had some limit orders uh, on the books and it just kind of toppled down a little bit. And it's, it's been fluctuating between, you know, 9,800. Actually, it was down to like 9,400 at some point today. And then it goes like 10, 1, 10, 2. Then it kind of goes back and forth because of all these different sell orders. And uh, I didn't even realize that I had an actual sell order because I had it for a while ago. I actually put it on my uh, Voyager app. Now, if you don't know, I'm a huge proponent of uh, Voyager. It's super easy to use. I, I use it all the time. It's my one two punch. I buy everything through Voyager. And then when I can, I will transfer things to Celsius because I like the interest rate. And then when I want to hold the bulk of my uh, holding, I will put it into my nano ledger. I do not hold uh, a massive amount in Celsius or Voyager. I try to get them off the exchanges and into my personal uh, bank vault, which is my ledger. Uh, but uh, when I was when I woke up today, I'm like, why do I have 100 bucks in my Voyager account? I mean, dollars. I don't have dollars. I have cryptocurrency. And I was looking. I'm like, what the heck? It sold. How'd that happen? And I'm like, oh, that's right. <laughs> like a month ago, I was just playing around with the uh, with the app. And I actually, you know, put in a limit order. I didn't know I could do it, and uh, here we are. So, if you're not aware, in the description of every one of my videos, there's a link. It looks something like this, and it'll, it'll link you to my exchange and reviews or wallets and everything else. These are all things that I've actually uh, have used, or I'm currently using, or absolutely will not use. And I break it all down uh, from Coinbase to, like, my, like I said, my one-two punch Celsius CFI, 
or yeah, CeFi, DeFi, Voyager Wallet, Gemini, Gemini Pro Trader, Binance, Uphold, Abra, Kraken, Cash App, and eToro, which I totally don't recommend for anybody. And I just kind of break it down like, here's the fees, here's how much it costs, here's how, what's going on, here's the different things that it has. Uh, and then Celsius and Voyager at the very bottom, I talk about the interest rates that you can earn uh, just by holding in your cryptocurrencies. And uh, yeah, I, seem, I have had zero problems with it so far. Zero, which is amazing because when I had Coinbase, uh, nothing but problems, especially with customer service. Customer service to me is big. A company that has great customer service usually has a great customer base, and unless you're the only game in town. Uh, like if you're the only game in town, then it doesn't matter. You could have the, the, the worst customer service and you're like, well, I got to do it anyhow because it's the only game in town. Coinbase was uh, kind of like that for me until I found out these other options. And that's why I put this together for everybody. Now at the very top, if you want to sign up, you can go right to the website and sign up. That's fine. Uh, you don't have to use these affiliate links, but if you do, you can get ten dollars for like uh, well, for Celsius, you get like twenty-five. Voyager, you get twenty-five. Gemini, I think it's like ten, and then uh, different different ones are all over the place, and some don't even have affiliate links. But um, you can do whatever you want. You can use them or not. So for to actually set up a limit order, if you aren't familiar with the Voyager app, I'm going to show you real quick right now how that all works. Okay, so you're on my phone. I'm just going to click on uh, Bitcoin. I'm gonna click on the trade. I'm gonna say sell Bitcoin. And from here, I'm just gonna put it in. Let's go for, I'm gonna sell 1,000 Satoshis, 10,000 Satoshis, 98.77. And I'm gonna click, well, first I gotta put, click on uh, at what the limit price is. So I don't want it 97.7 or let's go for like 11,000. Who knows? Maybe it'll go to 11,000 tomorrow. And that'll be my total. I'm gonna get 110 bucks. I'm gonna click on the, or slide to sell Bitcoin. So what that means is once I hit 11,000, then it sells and I'm done. So it's like a set it and forget it type of thing. Easy peasy. All right, and that's it. So uh, let's break into today's story. So first up, Cardano successfully initiates Shelly hard fork. Things should get easier. And uh, yeah, I like to hear that. And it states, the Cardano network is well on its way to the scheduled hard fork from Byron to Shelly on July 29th. The updated proposal run for five days during which the team will have multiple chances to abort the update up until Monday. During the weekend, Cardano engineers and the QA team will be conducting a 72-hour session to exhaustively test the performance of the update against their pre-launch checklist. So right now, everything seems to be going pretty good. I haven't received, seen any types of information out there that says that there's a, a problem, they're going to they're gonna abort everything. And this is Sunday, so by tomorrow, really they should be uh, moving forward. And that'll be the 27th, so on Wednesday, the 29th, I mean, boom, everything's uh, good to go. So I I think with all the with all the different times and things that they've actually put into this, I'm hoping everything uh, goes off without a, without a, a hiccup, but we will see. Anyhow, Charles Hoskinson also said that this update will probably be the last of Cardano's gigantic disruptive updates. The next phase will usher in an era of more subtle implements like native assets, smart contracts, overlay protocols, and new capabilities. And one of those things are like decentralized IDs. And uh, if you want to bank the unbank, uh, you're going to have to use some kind of like identification system. So a decentralized ID might be a pretty good idea. So we will see how that all works out. I think it's one of the most fantastic things I've heard about uh, because I'd like to see that also things happen as far as like decentralized voting but hey a person can dream moving on the first function of the update will be to implement a fundamental change to byron's code base and migrate it to shelly which will in turn initiate the hard fork uh, combined to deploy the shelly hard fork the second step will involve the endorsement of the first step as well as minor amendments to the initial proposal after which the green light for the hard fork will initiate. The Cartano team is confident of the progress so far, but as they exclusively stated, they are not afraid to delay or abort the process in case they run into a major roadblock. And they pretty much say the same thing. So, I mean, if you follow Cardano or Ethereum uh, for any length of time, you know that they're not the most fantastic as far as like hitting milestones, it's just uh, how it works. And, um, you know, I've been critical of that. But lately, Cardano has just been, you know, hitting these these markers amazingly. I can't believe it. And then Ethereum, uh, there was actually even rumors that, uh, you know, the ETH 2.0 launch was going to be pushed back to next year. And that was actually squashed by uh, Vitalik Buterin. So uh, we will see how that works out. But as far as like Cardano, they're actually hitting all their milestones. And uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been the most critical of Cardano. I'm an investor, but I'm like, I always have said, I'm like, can you just do things, just get things going, just throw things against the wall and see what sticks.
That's I mean, that, that's how I've always run my business as far as an entrepreneur. I'm like, okay, let's just see what works. And if it works, we'll use that. If it doesn't work, if 10 things fail, I care less. Just I just need that one thing to work. But uh, when you're trying to build a, um, a massive, massive project that's going to have global implications, especially in the financial system that could disrupt uh, multiple uh, industries, you probably want to get it right. So I maybe have been a little bit too rash in my assessment as far as how critical I was for them getting things going. And like I said, uh, like I want certain industries to be uh, precise, like 100%, uh, like the people like Boeing. Uh, when I'm up in an airplane, I do not want them, you know, someone to say, hey, you know what, that uh, new engine we used, we we're kind of shaky on that, so it might not work out. Uh, I want you to be 100%. So in this regard, I'm like, hey, I'll give them a pass. But I just like to say one thing, and that is that, I mean, if these are exciting times. These are the exciting times. In the very beginning, this is when everything happens, and it's just fantastic. Like when you've, when you're building businesses, it's not so much fun to get into the minutia every day and like management and, you know, doing all these different things just to, just to incrementally grow. The real fun is in the very beginning when you see all these different things that are happening around you and you're like, oh, that works and this works and everything's going good and, you know, okay, we have some failures and we'll do this. And, and that's what really drives me. And uh, I don't, to, to, to me, like these types of times, cryptocurrency digital assets, these are the exciting times. And uh, for you sitting right there watching this video, I'm just going to say it. Uh, you're probably going to be a millionaire. Okay. I and mean, that's just, that's just the truth. You're probably going to be a millionaire. Now I can't tell you what to invest in. And uh, I will just say, if you invest in the right things uh, over time, you will probably be a millionaire it's just it just depends on you know how crazy you get if you're gonna go and you know put all your money on the 3628th coin then uh maybe not work out for you right but uh there's different strategies you can use like i use dollar cost averaging i have my picks i i uh, you know uh, buy into these uh, every day or every week and um, i just kind of let it ride just like all those those early entrepreneurs or early adopters of Bitcoin, you know, all the way back a decade ago, when they're all sitting around and no one would pay attention to them and like, that's just nerd money. That's so stupid. Um, these people, that was the most exciting time for them. I can guarantee it. I'm sure nowadays it's not as exciting because it's like, well, people already know about it. But, uh, you know, just think about this. Where will you be in 10 years? Hopefully uh, you will be talking to your kids or your friends or your family and be like, you know what? I remember when Cardano was a nickel. I remember when Bitcoin's under 10,000. Remember those days? That doesn't happen anymore, my friends. So I just think that's how it's all going to be. And then to talk about, and just to, just to give you context to like where uh, you could be or we could be in 10 years, there was a video that was sent to me by Samad. So I want to say thanks, Samad, for sending this out to me. It was, it was a really good insight into a person who was there from the very beginning. This is, what's this guy's name? I always forget his name. Nicholas Nicholson. I, I probably butchered that. doesn't matter. But uh, he was one of the very first investors into Bitcoin. He was talking about, and I'm, I'm just going to have you listen to it, but the most interesting thing is that you know he talks about like how it was in the very uh beginning and then he talks about like these are the exciting times this is what is you know fantastic right now and it was just it was an eye-opening experience so it's like a minute and a half just take a listen what was the bitcoin price when you bought your first bitcoin uh actually there wasn't a bitcoin price it was i think in september october of 2010 and back then, um, there were very few marketplaces. I think there were one called Trade Hill, and they didn't really uh, know. Actually, they first operated later. So the Bitcoin price was zero. The first Bitcoin I ever got was uh, 50 Bitcoin from a friend uh, for paying his coffee on a cafe. Uh, later, when I made my first personal big investment, it was uh, 1,000 Bitcoin, and I paid $770, so 77 cents. You got really rich with, with Bitcoin. You made millions with it. The audience could think, he's rich, why isn't he retiring? So I'm asking, why not retiring? Uh, I, don't, I don't work um, to pay my rent. Uh, many people go for a job that they don't really like uh, in order to cover their expenses. Uh, my work is my life, so I'm doing exactly what I want. So in a sense, you could say I am retired in the sense that I don't work for money, but I work for, for, for what I want to do. Um, what is that? 
year, but that is to bring forward the, the crypto financial revolution to to see decentralized systems improve the world, to um, uh, uh, build services that people appreciate, to spend time with the people who are at the company who is like my family, um, uh, and to do all the adventures that we do at Bitcoin Swiss. Uh, why would I retire to go on an adventure trip to, I don't know, the Amazon or whatever, when what adventure we have here is 10 times more exciting. Why is it more exciting? Because it's real. You can uh, throw a lot of money after a canoe trip uh, down the Colorado River, but you are setting yourself in an artificial situation. The adventures and the experiences and the uh, fighting against the system and getting the banking license and uh, filling the vault with Bitcoin and, and providing services and trading and then there's a, a scandal and a hack and then there's a, that's real adventure, right? That's not something we pay to experience. It's not like going to the cinema. Uh, it's like living the movie. And that's just it. And that's why I'm involved. And I think that's why you're involved. And I think that's why a lot of people are involved because they know that this is the beginning. And I know some people say, no, it's not the beginning. This is, you know, we're halfway through. That's crazy. That's crazy. Go to go out in the streets and not the people you've been talking to for a while about Bitcoin. Just ask them, you know, hey, do you know about Bitcoin? They might say yes. They might say no. Okay, well, do you know about Cardano? Do you know about Ethereum? Do you know about Chainlink? Do you know about Tomato Coin? Do you know about? It doesn't matter. No one's gonna know that. Nobody's gonna know that. And this is why it's so it's so fascinating to be right here at this moment, because for the ups and the downs, it doesn't really matter. The trajectory is going to go up at some point because that's the way that this technology is going to work. That's just how I see it. Now I could be totally wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. But there is something to note here, and and that is that when he talks about. You know, this guy is a multi multi millionaire. He might even be a billionaire. Who I don't know. But you have to think about this. This is the thing that me and my wife talk about. Um, you know, when we make so much money throughout, you know, because what do you do with all that money as time goes on? You know, what do you do with that? Because there's a point where you're not going to need money. You're, you're going to have enough money to... Uh, pay your bills, uh, to have no different types of debt, to have everything that's, uh, you know, you just have it. You have food, you have shelter, you've taken care of your family, everything's set up, right? So then the next step really is, what do you do? And uh, to me, uh, really, you have to really think about what is important for you moving down. I think that's that's probably the bigger question to think about. Anyhow, but this is a question that you're going to essentially start to think about at some point, because like I said, if you're here now, i think that you're going to be a millionaire. Anyhow, moving forward in this article, uh, there was a quote by Charles, and he just talks about how Cardano will fulfill the 2009 Bitcoin promise. <laughs> I got to tell you, Hoskinson, uh, he does not spare any words. He doesn't mince it. He's just like, look, this is what I think is going to happen. And this is why we're awesome and da, da, da. So I got to tell my act to that. And instead of me just reading, reading it, I'm going to have you listen to what he did. He did a live stream and it was pretty interesting about how he just said, hey, this is what's going on. And I know that some people in the comment section, they think that Cardano was a scam for some reason. Um, sure. I just don't see that. Um, there's different things that, you know, you, you can point to this, point to that. And they say, well, Charles is an a-hole and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, well, so was Steve Jobs. He was a super jerk, but, uh, guess what? He gave me an iPhone and he gave me this awesome Mac that I'm working on right now. So, uh, sometimes you gotta be an a-hole to get things done. And if that's the case, Hey, I could care less. If I'm going into surgery, I don't care, uh, what your, uh, demeanor is. Just make sure you fix me. So let, let's just listen to Charles. He's got some interesting things to say. Oh, from... Warm and sunny Colorado. It's been a long day. Very, very long day. Uh, on the back of a very long week. And on behalf of Input Output Global, our product team, our engineers, our scientists, and each and every employee and contractor that worked with us to get us here, it is our pleasure to announce that a little after 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time today, uh, Samuel Leathers, our director of DevOps, initiated the update proposal to the Cardano main network. And we have now begun the countdown over the next five days uh, to hard fork Cardano from Byron to Shelley. Our last chance to abort will be sometime on Monday. During the weekend, the uh, engineers and QA team will be conducting an exhaustive 72-hour burn-in to go through all the checklists that we have. We did a pre-launch checklist, and uh, now we're going back through the second one. Uh, should uh, nothing come up, 
uh, the update will be endorsed and the fork will occur without delay or disruption on the 29th. Uh, every indication we have is the sky is blue, the weather's good, and we are now counting down towards launch. I'd also like to thank all the state pool operators who tirelessly over the last few months worked with our team to help us get to this day. Uh, they tested a lot of software. They found a lot of bugs. Um, they really pushed us and um, we were better for it. I'd like to thank all the exchange partners who have worked with us for the last two months. Uh, they've done an unbelievable effort and job giving us great advice, everything from Rosetta to uh, things as trivial as uh, some nuances on the APIs. It's been a long road to get here, a lot longer than just the last few months. Uh, Cardano began in 2015 as a dream. We wanted to build something that could deliver the promises that Bitcoin had back in 2009, not as an experiment, but as a system that could evolve over time to meet the needs of billions of people and provide an economic identity to those billions of people with power pushed to the edges, always getting more decentralized and always getting faster, more capable, and ultimately better for us all. This is in many ways a small step towards that vision. And in other ways, it's a giant leap forward because unlike every other update in the history of the project, we are now moving from a static and federated system to a dynamic and decentralized system. And our community has proven beyond a reason of a doubt over the last six months that they are well more than capable of taking custody of this dream and taking it to the next level. It's always a stressful time when you go through these transitions, but I am stunned by the profound effort, wisdom, and capability of those that stepped up. Thank you. It really means a lot to me. It really means a lot to all of us. Uh, if this is the army we have to go and win the war with, I don't even think it's a question of whether we're going to win or not. It's just a question of when. Each and every one of you earned this day as much as everyone else and some of you more so than others. So it's uh, a long road ahead, but this is a great moment. And it's one that uh, long overdue, sorry it took so long to get here, but we did our best and it looks like we hit every deadline we set back in May, which is a new thing for the project as a whole. I gotta agree. So uh, congratulations to Cardano, everybody who's holding Cardano and uh, has uh, stuck with it. So. I think there's uh, much bigger things on the horizon, but uh, only time will tell. All right, let's move on. Next up, my eToro account. Um, I had actually opened this up oof, four or five months ago uh, because I was trying to do, what I wanted to do was, it was called a dollar cost average, it was called DCA versus TA. And I was gonna, what I wanted to bet was one Ethereum that I could make more gains, uh, more of a percentage gain as just a investor, as a dollar cost averager. Uh, versus somebody who traded and I wanted to use eToro and I actually talked to uh, some people in the affiliate department and actually uh, had a different conferences and it just didn't work out for some reason they just never got back to me it never I don't know I don't know what happened but I thought it'd be interesting just to show the the benefits of dollar cost averaging because it's very you know people are like that's boring why do you do that why don't you just trade why don't you just go and you know max out your leverage and uh, 100x leverage and uh, make a lot of money I'm like well I don't do that but um i i've noticed lately that i get a lot of different requests like 22 or something like that this week for people who want to uh, follow me because you can you can copy traders on etoro and uh i just here to tell you that uh, i didn't do anything i didn't trade and I, I just opened up a position uh, i bought a while ago and i just kept adding a uh, little bits here and there uh and then after a while i mean i put in 550 and now i'm up to 1308 and uh it's just investing. It's just dollar cost averaging. So I know people like to talk about like uh, trading is great. And if you want to trade, that's fine. I just can't get into it. That's just not my thing. Um, that's your thing. It's your thing. But um, I'm just here to tell you that uh, if you're on eToro, don't follow me because I have nothing to, uh, you know, 
teach you on trading, obviously. Also, if you get an email uh, from Dan Digital Asset New at Gmail, that's a scammer. Uh, that's not me. And he's going to promise he or she's going to promise you that I can I can teach you how to trade. <laughs> just, just don't do that. That's so crazy. So uh, uh, that's it. That's all I want to say. And last up, Bitcoin is a form of money, and this actually happened. Uh, what was it uh, two days ago? Three days? Two days ago. And this was uh, there was a case. Um, it was a uh, United States versus Harmon. And he had this judge, uh, Judge Howell, wrote that money is commonly uh, means a medium of exchange, method of payment, or store of value. Uh, defining Bitcoin as money was integral to the court's decision to not dismiss criminal charges against Larry uh, Harmon, the operator of an unlicensed Bitcoin trading platform for laundering money under federal law. And basically this guy, you know, he, he screwed people out of money and he said, hey, uh, you, you, you can't charge me for money laundering because Bitcoin is not. Uh, money it's not a currency and the judge ruled yeah it is now we're going to <laughs> now you're going to be put in jail and then uh so that was the the legal statement and it and of course for cases and courtrooms it sets precedent so they can kind of look at uh, things moving back but you have to understand this is the last sentence here the court's comments mean that bitcoin is treated as money in the context of money transmission licensing in dc nothing more said Naraj Agarwal, Director of Communications at Coin Center, a cryptocurrency public policy think tank. So you have to understand, just because in one case says, okay, it's currency, that doesn't really mean much for Bitcoin uh, as a whole. Now, right now, Bitcoin is it is not a security. Uh, the SEC has determined that it's not a security. It hasn't said it is a commodity. Uh, I mean, it hasn't, I mean, the CFTC hasn't come out and said that. And uh, so some people say, well, the, you know, the, the current law is that uh, cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, is deemed as property. So maybe we can just have it as currency and we won't get taxed as property. It's not how it works. So uh, just because it's here like this, they can do it either way. But the IRS is going to say, nope, sorry, we're still going to tax you. And uh, same thing with uh, gold. And real quick, the IRS classifies uh, gold as precious metals, including gold, as uh, collectibles like art and antiques. And the, and the weird thing about gold is that you pay taxes on selling gold only if you make a profit. It's the same thing with cryptocurrency digital assets. You only uh, pay taxes if you uh, actually sell them. If you hold them, it's okay. If you transfer them into something, if you go from like Bitcoin to Ethereum, you're going to pay tax on that as well. That is a taxable event. But what's but this is a, the I didn't know this. A long term gain on collectibles is subject to a 28% tax rate, though instead of the 15% rate that applies to most investments. So interesting. But anyhow, how will we will be taxed? Uh, the IRS is always going to get you in some way. Let's just be honest. So they're not going to say, oh, it's just a currency. It's no big deal. Uh, no, it's going to be, it's probably going to be just property for a long time because the government's got to get their money. And that's usually how it works out. So let me know what you think in the comment section, but I don't see uh, this is uh, too great of a ruling. Uh, hopefully as time goes on, we will see, but I think it's that fantastic. All right. So lastly, I want to say uh, thanks to all my subscribers who have joined up. If you don't know, there's a join now button underneath. It's a buck ninety nine, and it's kind of like a tip. And uh, some people sign up just for saying thanks. So I want to say thanks, uh, Kaneman. Really appreciate it, Mr. Black. I am not I, Chuck C. Let's do some random shout outs. Ned Murtha, M A. Ooh, Gene Holland. Who else we got? Neil, Sandra Panduro and uh robert christensen nice so uh that is it for today i want to say thanks for sticking with me really appreciate it and uh if you like those videos maybe two more is going to pop up on your left and right don't know youtube uh, does that they choose those things just like the ads i have no control over the awful ads that you see that are usually scams i don't pick those youtube does but uh if you want to watch some more videos it's gonna be on your left and right and that's it for today thanks for sticking with me see you in the next one